Hello and welcome back to Speed Demon Painting. Today we'll be going over the changes to the Union Order of Battle for version 3.04, which was released in its beta format on the 1st of August 2023. Now, as I was preparing this video, I had uh, noted all of the different changes. A new updated Orbat was dropped on the 8th of August. So if your document that you find online is slightly different to the one you find here, that's the reason why. I tried my best to, uh, however, incorporate all of the small changes that were made in the latest one in this document. And after this video, we still have four more factions to go, so if you like this type of content and want to keep up to date with the rules changes, make sure you hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for those future updates. And after you've done all of the youtube -y things, you can actually see what has changed. Now, I've already made another video that is linked in the description below with all of the general changes that came to every single faction, so if you're interested in checking that one out first, make sure to check that one out as well. In that video I talked about acceptable attrition now being a thing for certain mass 1 units and uh, this is the case as well for the uh, Union, they have that for the Puritan RS-11 Automata. These models have not been released yet but they are these sort of suicide drones in a submarine format that uh, go to the enemy and blow themselves up. Obviously the Union does not care when those things get destroyed. One such rule that was significantly buffed is Cloud Hunting. It is now once per activation, this unit gets plus two to an attack action dice pool for each model with this rule that contributes to the attack, provided the initial target is an aerial unit. So it's a bit like Pack Hunter on steroids against aerial units. I double checked though, none of the units in the Union actually have this rule, but I'm mentioning it here anyway because it is quite noteworthy. I also don't mind that they include some rules that are not necessarily found within the Orbat itself, because you can have two people looking for a certain rule instead of just one set of eyes, which always speeds up the game. One rule that is unique to the Union though is give them hell. This seems like it is buffed, but it's not really. It's a bit of a cleanup because it includes the old fighting spirit rule for the Union. That one used to say when a unit makes an assault, if the result is a draw, it is instead considered as a havoc result. Now, as a reference, Havoc means you score at least one point of damage and a point of disorder. This is now merged with the actual uh, sp special operation that you can make to give all of your gunnery and fuselade weapons the devastating quality. Another rule that is completely new to the Union but has more to do with the mercenary unit that is introduced is the Honorable Eclipse Contractor, heck, Contractor for short. This model may add plus two to the defense action dice pool on any friendly models within five inch. This is a bit of an escort duty on steroids as well. This bonus is in addition to any other bonuses such as being part of an attached unit. The Honorable Eclipse Company Contractor rule only applies during each round where the force is at least equal to or less victory points than there are opponents in the most recent update. These guys behave slightly different from most uh, mercenaries. Most mercenaries actually get or start fighting better once you're ahead of victory points. These guys get extra defensive in a very major way if you're down in victory points. So I think the Honorable Eclipse Company is going to be quite an interesting one to include in most other factions as well because you get something that really ups your defense when you're uh, yeah, a bit in the ropes if you may call it that way. A small thing that I did not include here, by the way, is focused gunnery is cleared up to say that the lead weapon, the model with the lead weapon, needs to have this rule and the rest of the dice pool can just be added to anyway. So the wording that you see here is slightly outdated. Another thing that they changed is forward deployment. Forward deployment now no longer has the clause that uh, it must be deployed at the same time as aerial units. That clause has been moved to immobile. Uh, immobile platforms still have to be deployed at the same time as aerial units, but that means that there's a bit more uh, um, you know, leg room to play with uh, when it comes to uh, that forward deployment rule, and doesn't mean that they have to be deployed at the same time as aerial units, which was a great hindrance to almost anything that wasn't a platform. And like I said in my general video, Pacifier Assault, uh, assault has got a bit of a tweaked nerf if you will. The timing is no, no longer uh, immediate but happens right before the SRS resolution. Um, it is unclear however if pacifier assaults also benefit from the give em hell rule. I hope that gets clarified when the actual fully updated Orbat is here. Reading the rule now though, I don't think it has that benefit so keep that in the back of your head. 
The Union also has quite a few ships with the reliable design rule, and that one is buffed as well. This unit may make an additional action die due to its repair test. This is in addition to those given by the model's mass, and on top of that you get to reroll your jury rigged repairs as well, which is what it was before. Apart from some uh, reliable designs, the Union also quite has a lot of pipeworks, temperamental design, experimental designs, and those have been nerfed. They now require two successes to remove a critical damage marker, so be wary of that. However, repair rolls using the Advanced Repair Facilities rule ignore this one. So if you're repairing it via another ship, you don't have to take that into account. You just have to spend, send in uh, specialized repair teams, I suppose. In terms of the battle fleets you can select, there haven't been that many changes. One big one is the Union Support Battle Fleet though, it can now include a skimmer unit with the Union trait which has been added before, so you're not forced into taking any of the specialized ones if you just want to have a support battleship in your fleet. Uh, other than that, the big new addition is the Mercenary, Honorable Eclipse Company uh, Mercenary that has been added. Um, all of the units in this uh, company will get that uh, EJC contractor rule that makes them extra defensive when they're uh, on the back foot. Um, you have to include a custodian class main ship. Uh, that one is not yet in the Orbat doll, so that remains to be seen what that one's going to look like. Um, you can include a surface unit, but that one must uh, have the uh, uh, be the Valiant class, which is a destroyer class uh, to have. And then it becomes Honorable Eclipse as well. And you must include at least one flying co uh, unit in there, um, and those are going to be the Bogota class and Steward class um, that can be spammed in those. Um, those two, I think, are not in the Orbat either, so I expect that um, later down the line, when these models are actually released, that we're going to have to see another Orbat update to uh, accompany all of that. When it comes to the patrons of the Union, uh, I think it's a bit of a mixed bag. Abraham Lincoln definitely is a strong one. I mean, it does require three victory points to the opponent, but it is a permanent increase in victory and valor hand size for the encounter by plus one. That will stack if you've got a supply ship uh, along with you as well. And furthermore, once per round, you may discard your victory and valor hand and just draw replacement cards at any time. So you can sort of spend the good ones, if you will. Uh, if you definitely need a quick repair or that card, you can do so at the start of the turn and then just dump whatever is left over, or the, if they are particularly low value cards, and just draw another one. It uh, can be a big deal, I mean, getting a lucky hand is something that is over underest uh, often underestimated in this game. Caroline Hunter has been tweaked in the latest Orbat. It now says, unless it is cancelled once per encounter, you may replace the victory condition on any victory in Valor card, if it has a value of 50 or higher, with a double activation. So, following your activation, immediately activate another in-play unit that has not yet activated in this round. This is incredibly strong, and you can manipulate a card through uh, Valorous Conduct to do so. So, if you're taking this patron, you almost definitely want to take a frontline battle fleet in your force, because that is the only one that gets access to that Valorous Conduct. Um, your opponent can still cancel, obviously, but that just means that now you haven't really spent your trump card provided by this uh, fleet admiral. And then, should you so desire, you can take Silas Hodge, the Executive General of the Honorable Eclipse, and normally, mercenaries start uh, fighting uh, better when they are ahead in victory points, so you're sort of on the back foot and having to score a few victory points to get all of your bonuses, but the Honorable Eclipse company doesn't work that way, they fight extra well in a turn where they are behind, and you're automatically behind on this one. Um, However, uh, you do, <laughs> you still kind of want to win the game, and it is only checked during the um, uh, check for victory step, which only happens at the end of turn one. So you don't get the benefit from your honorable eclipse company straight away. You have to wait it out for a turn at least. Now before we jump to the actual ships themselves and the changes there, we're taking a look at the weapons first. There have been a few changes. First of all, the cruise missile silo for the, the Washington class has been nerfed in its uh, crippled state. It is now down to a 5-3 state in that one and uh, it can no longer fire in closing range at all, meaning those cruise missile silos are uh, quite tricky. Mind you, you can... Um, 
high velocity has been lost as well, but you can still get them if you're using Acrons uh, through their AWACS system. And Acrons have been significantly bumped uh, and buffed as well. But uh, yeah, a bit of a tough spot for the cruise missile silo uh, in this new version. You really, really want to be able to hang back because uh, as soon as there is an opponent within 20 inch of you, you're not going to be able to return fire with those uh, and artillery pieces. In addition, you almost have to combo them with um, with those to gain the extreme quality, extreme range quality rather. Uh, so uh, yeah, they're quite a hefty nerf to the cruise missile silo, making the ship uh, not unusable, but it's going to really take a skilled player to make the most out of it. The Grand Jackhammer for uh, the, the new John Henry has been nerfed a bit in its crippled profile, it's down two dice. However, the twin Sturginium hammers have been buffed um, and uh, there's less of a difference between the two of them. Uh, that means that uh, you shouldn't really have to feel forced to take one build over the other they're both kind of good and you have to remember John Henry Colossi are the ones that start on the table and have to ram without any submarauder tricks or anything like that so the the profile in its uh, its battle ready profile for the ramming weapons are going to be used more often than the uh, the, the crippled value so yeah take that in uh, into account as well and now what was just outright buffed is the heavy electro cannon battery and these are the experimental weapons from the union um, there's uh, well actually a plus one that I've missed here as well in the battle ready profile a plus one support dice in uh, closing as well and a hefty plus two uh, for both uh, lead and support in its uh, long range so yeah a bit of a buff to uh, all the discovery cruisers and the USS Mexico as well when it comes to the ships of the Union, though, there are no real sweeping changes. The America Special Operations vessel hasn't changed at all compared to the previous Orbat. Uh, the release is uh, imminent, it's on pre-order now, so it's a pretty good one. The Columbia Heavy Battleship has been uh, somewhat buffed, uh, because uh, well, these slow vessels can now go full steam ahead. Um, meaning that their speed can be up to 10 inches, which isn't a bad thing for something armed with a heavy broadside and a regular broadside to boot as well. And on top of that, uh, you can now actually replace any of the rocket batteries it has for gun batteries or the Gatling guns, should you so desire. So all identical weapon loadouts are now possible for the Columbia Heavy Battleship. That means it should definitely be on your radar because that is an absolute centerline brawler of a unit now. The Constitution battleship has not changed. If you liked your Constitution, you can keep your Constitution, in other words. And the USS Mexico, the, uh, the little uh, variant of it, uh, has seen no punch changes. It has, however, received a buff due to the buff to the heavy electro cannon battery, so that's good. However, temperamental design has also gotten a bit of a nerf, as we can see, so keep that uh, in the back of your head. Overall, I think it is buffed, though, because temperamental design is something you can work around, and you can still use cards to clear out any of your crit, uh, critical damage, should you so desire. The USS Texas hasn't changed uh, at all, it's, uh, it's still as good as it ever was. In fact, I think it's one of the best ships the Union roster has overall. So uh, yeah, if you're taking that one, you can definitely continue to do so and it has not been nerfed, which is good news for uh, that particular ship. The Enterprise Heavy Carrier was always a staple within Union fleets and that hasn't changed. It's still as solid as it was before. The Independence Battlecruiser sees no changes. Um, the uh, the sort of uh, uh, the, the the release is imminent. It's here now uh, that you can get. It is a solid little ship. If you want to have a slightly cheaper uh, variant of them, uh, there's a few changes to uh, getting heavy rocket batteries for free. That is of note because we'll see that happening a few times throughout the Orbat. Um, because of the way that uh, Give em Hell works, usually you want to fire with gun batteries in a Union force, and uh, therefore the upgrade to rocket batteries isn't always one that pays off. So quite often you will see rocket batteries being a free upgrade now, uh, as it should be, because uh, otherwise it was just a useless option in my book. And you have to remember with the Akron... Uh, little attached units as escorts you can give them extreme range quality so there's still a point to taking rocket batteries it's not like it's useless it's just that um, now it's more of a, a choice you make instead of just a downright downgrade like it was before 
when you have to pay points for something that was a side grade, which isn't correct. The USS Indianapolis is a special uh, Pipeworks version of, um, of that uh, independence uh, ship that has been tweaked now in the latest Orbat to now actually have the same weapon profile as well with the two cum batteries also firing uh, either uh, F uh, FPS, um, so in, in 270 degrees to the front. Also there's been a change to the helical rail guns. They now, if you have a gunnery quality weapon no longer have a support value of one but of three so that is way more useful if you ask me and it is definitely a ship that is now worth taking a, uh, to play around with. The other named variant the USS Rio Grande also sees a similar change the weapon profiles have been cleaned up and uh, yeah the thermobaric valley sure as hell does sound scary. Um, one thing that I'm quite curious about is uh, if the actual box is going to get an arc generator. I've received some good news, I will be getting this box for a preview, so again, subscribe to the channel if you want to see what's up with that release, and uh, you'll know soon. In the recent update, the Liberty Battle Carrier has been uh, given a bit of a points reduction to 234 points, because, uh, yeah, at 6.4, at 250, well, SRS capacity 6.4, and 249 points that wasn't really a very attractive ship to begin with uh, now that has been fixed a bit and it's down to 234 points no changes to the senator command cruisers they are not released yet so you won't see them quite often in the game as well and the special variant of the uss monitor um, this is the only virginia class ship here uh, the monitor has become slightly cheaper and has been given the full steam ahead buff as well. This is the one that launches the uh, the assault, the pacifier assault. So uh, yeah, good buff to that one. And uh, on top of that, you can replace any rocket batteries with gun batteries. So again, a bit more flexibility in weapon loadouts, making uh, sure that this ship should be on your radar and you're not just defaulting to the basic constitution every time. In terms of the surface units, not a lot has changed. I mean, the Union was in a pretty good spot. They, uh, they're all about favoring heavy firepower through their uh, give em hell. So there's not exactly a lot of changes there. The Chicago Long Range Cruiser is uh, not out yet. It's one of those uh, alternate build options for the Senator class, I suppose. No changes there. The battle platforms have not changed. However, one that has changed now because it's uh, released is the Defiant Destroyer. Um, there's been a bit of a change to the number of ships that you got. Um, the points per model uh, haven't necessarily changed, uh, but you now take them per two rather than per three like they used to be. And on top of that, there are no two forward-facing gun batteries. It's one aimed to the fore and one to the aft, um, which is a change compared to the rules that it used to have. Another small tweak, but one that is in line with most of these sort of destroyer type ships, is that the maximum squadron is now down to uh, five models rather than the six it used to be. All in all though, uh, 35 points for a double gun uh, destroyer with uh, light broadside is, is definitely up there with some of the better destroyers, so overall I rate this entry quite high. The Discovery Arc Cruiser has been significantly buffed and on top of that has received a nice little 5 points point reduction. Uh, you have to keep, keep in mind though that the temperamental design has been nerfed a bit but overall I say this ship has seen a significant buff and uh, yeah, worth experimenting with. The 4 point is released now as well uh, but there's no real uh, rules changes to it. Pacifier Assault was just a small little mistake that was back here so no real changes there. And uh, the Farragut Frigate has seen a moderate bump up in points uh, with uh, 1 point per model uh, which isn't exactly the worst thing that can happen. It's still one of the better frigates you have but I have to say it is in fierce competition now with that Defiant we saw at 35 points. You're swapping out a gun battery for a Sperry torpedo launcher uh, to get a bit of a better deal with the Farragut frigate. But overall I think the Destroyer has my preference. 
The Freedom War platform hasn't changed, but what has changed is this new Frontier platform transport. Again, with that uh, Independence Battle Fleet, this was one of the builds that you can take, and it is a completely new one. You're not exactly taking it for the heavy amount of firepower that it has, because it just has a heavy rocket battery along, and that one is uh, somewhat awkwardly placed at the back, along with a torpedo salvo and a heavy broadside, but this is a pure support ship. Why? Well, it provides advanced repair facilities of three, um, contra-rotation, long-range support, making all of your pacifier assaults better, along with uh, your uh, your Akron support rules are also better if you take those. It has supply depots, so it's very much a utility ship. It also comes as a platform transport, which means it can spawn, if you will, a platform with, platform within two inch of it. You do have to keep in mind this platform cannot be given any upgrades, but uh, the sentry platform makes the most sense, obviously. So actually you get a nifty little um, sentry platform is 70 points. You get a nifty little support ship for only 113 points after it has created its platform, which uh, definitely can be uh, something fun to experiment with as well in these lists. The only thing I find a bit of a shame is the fact that this ship does not come with uh, the Pipeworks trait. Um, it is one that possibly with its advanced repair facilities and the fact that it is creating, likely, um, immobile platforms which are a thing in the Pipeworks uh, roster, uh, it sadly doesn't have that keyword yet. I hope they change that. The Gettysburg was always a bit of a point of contention between uh, players because was it useful, was it not? Uh, it was a bit on the slow end of the scale. Uh, that has now been buffed by the full steam ahead, so if you're going in a straight line this thing definitely um, goes a bit faster. It has gained shallow draught like all of those uh, or war uh, era ships as well. And the big buff is that it now has a heavy broadside instead of a regular one. That does come at a points bump of 4 points to uh, 119 points, and its regular fray value has been increased a bit as well, meaning that uh, yeah, you can still do a bit of an extra assault once you get to the enemy as well to make uh, good use out of that new heavy broadside value. Um, it is still in contention a bit with... Uh, uh, with the other Lexington heavy cruiser, uh, although the Lexington has seen a few changes as well. The Intrepid light cruiser has uh, seen a small little buff for the free rockets, but we've seen that one as well, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. What is more interesting is the Lexington heavy cruiser. The points cost hasn't changed, but it has received a free extra hull points, making it more durable than ever before, and it has received the same heavy broadside buff as the other one. Uh, ironically, when moving in a straight line though, the, the Gettysburg is the faster one of the two. And uh, the slightly more fighty one compared to, uh, to this class. The Armor 7 of the Lexington, however, is no joke. So it is very much the, the big heavy brawler that it is supposed to be now. And quite tricky to take down. And indirectly uh, sort of getting a boost as well is the name variant of it of the Dead Presidents. You are paying significantly more per model. I mean, almost 80 points for this one. They enjoy the same buffs, but for those 80 points, you really are getting quite a lot of extra rules. I mean, you get Devil's Own Luck, an internal shield generator, pack hunter, shadow hunter, tactical cavitation. Well, it has that one as well. But veteran repair teams on top of that, meaning those, uh, well, what is essentially nearly 30 points per model, does result in quite a lot of extra things. So yeah, good unit as well, and can be included in Pipeworks too. The Montgomery has not been uh, changed at all, it's still a, a decent advanced repair facility ship for all your experimental cruisers. Um, the Nashville Strike Cruiser is unreleased, but it did get a 10 points increase, I think this should say. So uh, it was quite a solid little gun bought uh, for 180, so that's, uh, that's already been preemptively buffed a bit. Um, is yeah, easy to proxy now as well with the new Mass 3 ship out. 
The Oklahoma offshore support platform, no changes. Neither do we see any uh, real important changes to the provenance merchantman, except for a slight buff that it now has the reliable design and the shallow draw rule to go along with it. And if you want that very important Semper Fortis uh, rule that allows you to uh, retake your Valor effects on a lucky exploding uh, hit, this is the most uh, common way to do so. So it's a good thing that this one has received a few small buffs to go along with it. The Reliant Monitor has also gotten this heavy broadside upgrade as well, along with the shallow draught. So you're actually getting uh, quite a lot of broadside firepower if you are uh, opting for these, uh, yeah, these these new ships in uh, in the Union. Uh, especially given the fact that there's the Give 'em Hell rule, that is a more important upgrade than you could possibly think, because a few lucky exploding. Uh, hits on those uh, broadsides, even at the heavy broadsides I should say, at closing range is going to do some damage due to the devastating rule. No real changes to the Roanoke Strike Carrier, although the Saratoga Littoral Cruiser has been nerfed uh, significant. Its fi fray value was nerfed, but that is something that I deem irrelevant, because you're always using your pacifier assault anyway, it just gives you more dice, so they can do whatever they want with it, although it has lost a hull point as well, which is the big important nerf. On top of that, with the 12 points, that is a significant nerf, but this one came out on top of all the other ships in terms of efficiency, so I guess that, uh, that just brings them more in line with some of the other ships. The Springfield Corvette, hasn't changed. Um, the Alliance saw a bump up in points cost for similar ships, uh, the Equierre, but the Springfield Corvette still is a very cheap little thing to add on to your uh, Union flagships to give them a healthy little uh, defense boost through their uh, Corvette duty. The Sumter landing ship hasn't really changed except for getting Shallow Draught. Mind you, Shallow Draught is more important now that uh, coming within one inch of, uh, of of a terrain feature means that you're going to get a disorder token these days so it's not an unimportant buff I mean, you get a bit more uh, freedom of movement and along with paddle wheels I mean that still makes the Union or some of the maneuverability kings out there the Valiant fast destroyer has seen a reduction in points cost dropped uh, three points per model with the same limitation that you can now only take four of them in a maximum sized unit and the rocket battery here is not double forward like it used to be but one in the fore and one in the aft. Um, the Hydrophone Relay is a rename of an ability already had. Uh, it comes with Skyfire for those rocket batteries and if I'm not mistaken this is the one that you have to take in the Honorable Eclipse Company as the option so definitely uh, one that you should keep your eyes out. Uh, for because uh, it's the only surface unit that they can include. The poor old Washington missile cruiser was a bit too good for its own good. <laughs> so it sees a bit of a points reduction, that's a weird thing to say given the first sentence, but that cruise missile silo it has got a significant nerf in the cripple profile and can only shoot if you are actually uh, shooting it at a long range now, meaning this uh, Akron Aerial Escort for 15 points is near mandatory now, um, if it wasn't before. Uh, and you do want to get that high speed guidance using uh, the AWACS rule, so taking this one almost automatically means taking Akron Escorts as well. And they are uh, a bit more expensive, but yet more of them. We'll talk about that later when we get there. Overall though, if you want long range firepower, the Washington definitely no longer is the de facto choice within the Union, which is perhaps a good thing for internal balance, but it, uh, it hurts if you've built a lot of Washingtons. The Yorktown cruiser is still a, an absolute staple out there, one of the most efficient ships you get with the devastating thing. Um, and it can now change out to the heavy rocket batteries for free, should you so desire. But if you do so, definitely take the Akron Aerial Escort as well to give it uh, unlimited, uh, well, sorry, extreme range. Unlimited would be cool, but extreme range. Um, and still an interesting choice, good on them. The John Henry Vitruvian Colossus has been changed a bit and, uh, well, buffed as well because uh, the twin Sturginian hammers definitely hit harder than they ever did before, though at the expense of 6 extra points per unit. 
In terms of ramming capacity, it really is a very strong little thing because this is one of the few units that also has a double strike ability. Uh, once per activation, this unit may make the following Valor effect, providing the Valor card discarded is at least 40, so it's one of those Valor effects that is considered strong. Each model in this unit with this rule that has caused at least one point of damage in the ramming action with their twin Sturginium hammers or Grand Jackhammer, so you don't lose the rule if you swap weapons, uh, may make a second ramming action against the same or a new point of impact within two inch of the first. The action dice pool for the second ram is the same as the first, so all of your movement, uh, etc. that you did in the first turn is taken into account as well. The moving model may not make any further movement this act activation if it uses this rule. So quite a strong one. Especially if you take into account the terror from above rule giving it an extra three ramming. Strong. However, it has to be said, this thing doesn't exactly have a lot of hull points to begin with. And the problem with it is, it is uh, Armor 6 Citadel 12, meaning a, uh, a bit of a lucky, if you will, 12 hit on this model that rolls the correct critical hit uh, damage effect can immediately send it into the crippled stage. Which is why I personally have my reservations for this this model. Uh, you're almost going to have to screen it with all of those mass 3 ships that you have in your fort. In addition, I'm going to be sending this as feedback. I hope that the hammer song can be slightly amended, that there is no longer a need to roll for taking damage yourself when making the ram action. Because Technically, if you make a good double ram with hammer song and you're unlucky that you roll two exploding hits after you've performed those ramming actions, it can actually cripple itself. I mean, it's something I've, I am an Imperium player, mostly. I do like using my own uh, big heavy robots, the Blitzschlag ones, they always get the strike twice. But they've got the whole points to deal with that. It's not a big deal if they lose them. Even if it happens twice, they're still not crippled. <laughs> These guys, however, are on the brink of death if that sort of situation happens. So I hope this model gets a small tweak just for that. There are no changes to the Lakota Super Heavy Hover Tank. Mind you, that one has not been released, so um, yeah, not a lot of feedback to be given about that one for you now. The Cheyenne Hunter Submarine sees a very small nerf in line with what we've seen across the board. These type of Hunter Submarines can now only be taken into packs of five at most, so yeah, that's a change. The Puritan RS-11 Automata, like I said at the start of the video, now benefits from acceptable attrition, so you can just blow them up uh, to your heart's content without suffering any victory point losses for it. However, the auto-destruct sequence has been nerfed a bit in the latest update. Um, you now need two models to be destroyed to confer one automatic catastrophic explosion to any model within two inches, so just so that if you take a unit of, um, of, of six of those that you're not just managing to get those within range and then just blow something up with six uh, automatic catastrophic explosions because yeah that's gonna hurt a bit too much I suppose. A very significant change though for the whole roster in general for the Union playstyle is the Akron Sentry Rotor. That one has gone down with a massive eight points per model while not changing all that much in fact, it only got better. It now has a Skyfire, so it's got some additional um, anti, uh, anti air punch with those rocket pods. Mind you, they're just rocket pods, don't expect miracles from them. But uh, you are now fielding them in units of four rather than two. I don't think that was amended in blue, um, which is why their points cost has gone up, but you're getting way less. Uh, points per model out of it. In addition, they also have the new Hydrophone Relay, which is an ability that just removes Obscured in total for uh, all of those models nearby, and doesn't just buff your uh, aerial attacks with the uh, Akron warning and control system that is still so uh, important for the Union as a whole if you want to play around with missile weapons. Like, uh, if you can combine this one with, for instance, the USS Rio Grande with its uh, thermobaric uh, volley, that's really, really going to sting as well. And uh, it is important to give that, uh, that long range, that extreme range for your cruise missiles as well, if you still want to go that route for long range bombardments. 
So yeah, given how much they add to your Union Force as a whole, I would almost never leave without an Akron Sentry unit in my force if I were to play with the Union, so very, very good buff. The Constellation Attack Airship has not been changed yet, um, the Flyers are not out yet. The Patriot RC-52 uh, Automata, still really, really good, um, no changes there. The Republic Cloud Raker Airship also has not seen any changes, but again, expect to see some changes in the aerial department once those models get released. And the uh, Ticonderoga Assault Airship, that's how you say it, um, is uh, is also seeing no changes, and it is a very mean and faster way to get some uh, pacifier assaults in there, so one that I rate quite highly. And there we have it, those are the Union changes. Overall, not as drastic a change as we've seen to some other factions, but they are in a good spot. And those few changes that are there are definitely targeted to making some of the stuff that was not really taken before more useful than ever before, and stuff that was perhaps taken a bit too much down a bit, so an Orbat uh, update that is pretty much in line with what you can expect. And there we have it. I'm not quite sure what video I should be doing next. If you've got a suggestion or something you really want to see, make sure you post it in the comments down below and I'll try to get to it. Four more to go, so if you like this sort of content, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye!